In this video, we're gonna take a look at a black ink by Noodlers, Raven Black. Now, as always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. Also down in the description is a link to the Black Ink playlist, so if you wanna see more of them, you can find that there. I'm an ink guy, and let's get into the first writing sample done on 90 GSM Claire Fontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread halo sheen, no shade. You know why it doesn't feather? I don't know. <laughs> the extra fine is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread halo sheen, no shade, and 12 seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread halo sheen, no shade, 19 seconds to dry. The uh, scrubby for both show no color variation. We didn't expect it. We don't want it, and we didn't get it. And the smear test, you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a Pilot Custom 823 with a broad nib was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. The next writing sample is done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. No bleeding, minor ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine, same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 17 seconds to dry. Medium, same tone as the extra fine and the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, and 31. Wow, that's kind of a longer time. 31 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show us no color variation. We don't want it. We're not getting it. The smear test, I don't think you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down, and then it's put in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. And this is interesting. It's why it's such a deep, dark black. Down at the bottom, you see the beginnings of a line forming, and it is a nice green down there. And then it pushes its way up, and we do see it's with black. Now, the one on the right that's allowed to dry for 10 minutes, none of that green is moving. Most of that black is staying. Only a little bit of the black is pushing its way up as a light gray. We can expect some resistance from this ink. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 10 seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine and the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 18 seconds to dry. The extra fine actually shows some color variation, but thankfully it didn't happen. The medium showed none and we didn't get any. Smear test, you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, I would not use this. This strangely had a lot of blowout and got really gross with the highlighter. Enough of it was moving, which really is surprising here, but don't use it in a note-taking situation. Water is reactivating and lifting a bunch of this ink. You see that green being left behind there from the chromatography. Pen flush didn't really do anything to move it, which surprised me because water did. One-third bleach solution is starting to break it down, but is really turning it yellow. Now the best part, because I know people like to rag on noodlers, but it only took water to get this out of my pen. And, you know, vacuum fillers sometimes can be a pain to clean, but I had no issues. The next writing sample is done on Leuchstrom 1917 paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feathers spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub. With no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and eight seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine and the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 12 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both shows no color variation because we don't want it, we don't get it, and the smear test, I do not think you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5, and the realm of normal was 2.1 to 2.9. 
Noodler's Raven Black has a viscosity of 1.82, making this a wet ink. If you're interested in how the viscosity tests and all that's done, there's a link to that video down in the description. But right now, we're going to do 28 pound copy paper. Now, there is a lot of it's getting deeper into the page. It does cause a little bit of ghosting, much more in the medium than with the extra fine. Not too worried about that scrubby. Only a couple spots. I said a lot of, as in it's coming in, it's deeper. I see it more in person than on camera. I'm hoping it comes through. These are the deepest spots. Feel pretty safe. It doesn't touch the page underneath, and you could probably use the back of the page. The medium. It has tiny feathering the whole way through. It does spread just a little bit. It has no halo sheen and no shade. The extra fine is a little lighter than the medium. It has no feathering. It does spread just a little bit to a fine. It has no halo sheen, no shade, one second to dry. Scrubby shows no color variation. We're not getting it, but I'm not liking this lighter tone. The smear test, you can't smear it, so you don't have to worry about it. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, and the realm of normal was 13 to 21 seconds. Noodler's Raven Black has an average dry time of 18 seconds, making it normal. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. Now for all of this bleeding into the paper and leads to a heavy amount of ghosting, the good news is none of it came through and touched the page underneath. However, there is no using the back of this paper. You won't be able to read it. The medium has tiny, go or tiny uh, feathers like in the word raven, really tiny, not a problem, honestly. It's spread is more of a problem. It goes to about a broad. No halo sheen, no shade, the extra fine is just a tad lighter than the medium. It has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, one second to dry. Scrubby shows no color variation. We don't get any in the smear test. You can't smear it, so you don't have to worry about it. Instead of finding inks that look like Noodler's Raven Black, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I went with a red ink by Levenger, their Fireball, because we all know how ravens love cinnamony alcohol drinks. Now, if you'd prefer a different complement color, then down in the description are links to those playlists. So what do I think of Noodler's Raven Black? A very solid, flat black with no tone variation or shading, except on that cheap paper. That's why I went back and said almost no tone variation. I like it. It just takes a little patience to get the from to get it from Canada. It's worth it. Black isn't my favorite ink, but the truth is I use tons of it. So I'll be using this ink up with no problem. So what nib and pen will give the best writing experience with this ink? This is a dealer's choice. It really performs very well, very solid black all the way through it. I don't know that, you know, if you use black that this would be bad in any way. I hope you got something out of this video. And in the next video, we're going to take a look at, at Sailor's Niori Samir. And I know I killed that name.